Rich Tarani here at the TMC Roadshow in Dallas 2015. Uh, Dan Carroll's with us. He is the uh, CTO of Telstrad. Uh, Dan, welcome to the show. How are you? Good. Thank you, Rich. Uh, so I figured we'd start at the top. Why don't you give me the uh, overview of what Telstrad does? Right. So Telstrat, um, in its current form, we've been in business since 1992. Uh, we provide call recording and WFO solutions, uh, both for on-premise deployments or for hosted applications. So uh, you've seen uh, a lot of changes in the workforce optimization market, I'm sure, in the last five, ten years. I mean, the advent of things like uh, cloud coming to the market. How has that affected the way you deliver solutions to customers? The, the migration for software as a service and providing software from the cloud has had a tremendous impact on us and what we do. Uh, we started really looking at it about three years ago. We went to some trade shows where there's some newer voice, hosted voice platform providers. Uh, you know, you've got your traditional players uh, that we have sold to resellers since the year 2000, but there were uh, new players, hosted voice platforms, and we found, we went to a trade show about three years ago. We were the only one of our competitors there. So we looked at it and said, well, this is a great opportunity. Um, these guys, have their, their customers loved them. Um, they had a, a ton of deployments, not a lot in contact center yet, but they had a lot of, we kept meeting customer after customer. I have 200,000 lines of hosted voice and I use this company software. I have 200,000 lines. Um, so it was pretty exciting. And we looked at the product we had at the time and how we were selling it and what it needed to do in this kind of environment. And so we decided to make the, so we had at the time, Everything we were selling was on-premise. It was single tenant. We might have, we had some really good customers that were uh, outsourced contact centers and BPOs. Some of our bigger customers were. But even what they did is it acted like on-premise. It was single tenant. Uh, it was a single administrator, a site, site admin. They might have 20 clients, but the clients would just log in and play calls for a specific set of phone numbers or a specific set of agents, their agents. It was no different than in a traditional on-premise customer that had a supervisor that could only play calls for 10 agents. Um, but to really work well in the, in the SaaS model and in the hosted model, you need to have it where you have security and things are isolated per client. So you want to share the infrastructure, but you want to be able to have all that security. So we started rewriting our software about three years ago, came out with our first truly multi-tenant version, uh, Q1 of last year, 2014. Just did another update. We have our release five that came out this year, um, where it was it was interesting. And some of our early multi-tenant deployments actually got feedback from a from a try and buy customer and said, "This is a provisioning nightmare. There's so much I have to do." So I said, "Okay, well, you know, tell us about it. Let's let's look at that." And we came out with our next release where it automated everything that he was that he had issues with. Um, so yeah. So uh, multi-tenant, just for the, for the people who might not be aware, basically isolates one. Um, instance of what's happening in the software from another so that there's no way that one customer could get to the data of another customer, right? Right. That... In fact, what we did was was very secure. Um, there was a, Every client uh, is essentially an instance. It's, they have their own database. And there's a couple advantages to that. One is it's, it, it, feels much, it feels very secure. And it's also neat that if a customer was using a service provider or using us, and then they decided after so many years, oh, I'd really you know, okay, we're, we're done, we no longer need this service, but we need access to our calls. We could take all those calls in their own database, hand them to the customer, and, uh, and they have access to them. So the, all the data that we create, which is kind of what we do, um, we create tons of data, millions and millions of calls per year for these clients, um, but it's all portable and they could take it with them if, if they needed to. Now, for contact centers that don't necessarily want to jump into the cloud, but they may want to take a, a step into the cloud, how do you, if, if at all, do you enable them to work with you in maybe um, a piecemeal approach or a, like a one-step-at-a-time one approach to the cloud? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. We had um, our first ever... So, so whereas we used to be completely you know, single-tenant on-premise, now with the software that we have now, we can deploy it on-premise, um, purely on-premise, purely in the cloud, or hybrid solution, which is a mixture. So we had, um, and we provide that in our, so we have traditional vendors, we always sell through channels. Uh, we've never sold a deal directly, ever, in our, in our history, which is fairly unique in, in the WFO space. And we have reseller partners that would sell on-premise PBX that have started their own UCAS offerings or their own hosted voice offerings. And initially, when we started doing this about two years ago, we wanted to really get them to add our WFO solutions in their data center. So we felt it was very important that if you had the hosted voice here where the data is being generated, 
where the calls are being generated, to ensure that you record them well, we wanted the recording server in the same data center. So we started doing that. Um, signed up some of our resellers that converted over to having their own hosted applications would put our software in their data center. We were wary at the time of being able to put, of having our own data center with our own, since we, we weren't going to go provide the hosted voice, it didn't make a lot of sense for us to have our own data center with our own recording servers and WFO applications because we were concerned that the voice might get lost. You'd lose packets, not record. And with voice recording, if you don't record that packet, um, it's gone forever. You'll never be able to record that. But we've actually made a number of really uh, good hires, uh, guys that have worked at other companies that have had really good success, and they've, they've trained us on some techniques. So now we're able to have customers that might have an on-premise voice application. So you have your traditional PBX. It's not end of life. It's a few years old. There's no reason to, to get rid of it at this time. But they might want to try out hosted applications. They want to they want to try you know, software as a service and stop having to spend you know the advantages, and not having to spend the capital expense up front, just have an opex expense. So we're actually able now to do with on-premise voice call recording in the cloud or WFO applications, quality assurance, workforce management, speech analytics, desktop analytics. Excellent. Now. Um you didn't mention, at least I don't think you did, uh, virtualization. Is it something that you're supporting with the software yet? Oh, yes, yes. We made that change five, six years ago. To, and when we did, you had to make some changes to support virtualized. But, uh, and, it, and virtualization's been great. We used to have a small number, a smaller number of test servers, and now we have hundreds uh, of, of test servers. We turn them up all the time. Now, this is moved to containers. Is that affecting uh, you at all? Do you have to modify your software at all, or does that even apply to you? Just containerizing uh, virtualized environments, it may not be something that affects you. No, it's something It's like something the I new heard wave of. of virtualization, so well, our next interview, maybe that'll come up. <laughs> Uh, then the next question I had was um, in terms of uh, interaction analytics. How does that um, integrate with the other things that you're doing? Oh, very well. Um, we've so we're on, on the interaction analytics, we're looking at two things. We have desktop analytics, where we're doing, which effectively provides a lot of CRM integration. Um, we're able to, so it's very important in the call recording industry to be able to, to be PCI compliant, HIPAA compliant. When sensitive information is present, you need to pause the call, the audio call. If you're doing screen recording, you need to definitely pause the screen in case anything's uh, visible on the screen that needs to not be recorded. Um, so it's interesting because if you look at five years ago, in order to do that, you'd have to write software that talked to the customer's CRM, and then you'd have to write software that talked to our, our product. So someone had, to, had that was a very expensive investment, very time consuming, very expensive, and then you'd have to maintain that software. Well, so things that we were doing five and ten years ago with custom software, now we're doing with a technician, uh, one, of my, one of our field installation technicians who's not a degreed software programmer, will write a script and be able to, we have a customer that's a travel agent that takes payment card information from 77 different websites and they change that weekly. Wow. And we're actually going to train them um, on how to make those changes themselves without a degree software person on staff. So everything's now moving you know, through automation and analytics, uh, things that were very expensive with programmers are being done now. Great. Uh, anything else we should know? Speech analytics is, uh, is another area where it's very interesting in the call recording industry. Um, there's some, we're able to provide automated quality assurance. So rather than, so we support both methods. We support the method of you know, listening to a sampling of calls, taking six calls per agent per month randomly, or augmenting that with speech analytics. Use speech analytics to find interesting calls, high-value interactions, and then do then evaluate those calls. Maybe you want to look this month at how your agents handle escalated customer situations and see how your various agents are, are handling that so you can look at Ooh, this agent. This, you know, these agents are doing great. They handle this scenario really well, but this agent really struggles. Let's get them some additional training. Very exciting. So I just want to make sure that we, we've covered everything. Is there anything coming up that we should know about or any other news? Well, uh, there's, a, there's another aspect of a product that we're launching at the end of this year, uh, next quarter, where just like the move, so one of the challenges for us or one of the industry changes here as we go to the large hosted provider offerings is it starts to look a lot different than your traditional on-premise voice. And so we've adapted our software along the lines. So if you look at some of our larger customers, they might have, say, 30 contact centers. Uh, they might have 30 voice platforms, 30 contact centers, 30 engaged deployments, WFO deployments in their network. 
Well, could you imagine how much effort it takes to upgrade those systems? Sure. So if you're doing two upgrades a year, or patches or maintenance releases on 30 systems, you have all these technicians on site, uh, all the expense. Well, what if you could centralize that? And so some of our customers have figured that out, and they started coming to us saying, Telstra, what can you do when I have, I have these 30 contact centers? We're planning on making them, um, we're planning on centralizing those. We're going to have two data centers for geo-redundancy. Half our calls are going to be in this data center, half on that data center. If I lose a data center, all my calls need to be, be handled on this data center. You know, what do you guys have that can scale really large? Because now instead of our biggest site being 2,000 agents, we're going to have 15,000, 30,000 agents. So what we've done for that is what we call the engaged scaling cluster. Um, with, the, with the scaling cluster, we'll back up one step there. On the, so in a traditional deployment, um, we have a number of recording servers, but they, they operate independently, which is fine because generally this site was looking for calls from this server, this site was looking for calls from that server. There's not a lot going across all the sites. We've provided centralized search and administration, um, Seamless search and playback. So if you did, for scalability reasons, have multiple recorders, you could search across them. Um, we have some large customers doing that. The difference with the scaling cluster is we're deploying very large systems with interchangeable call recording engines. So now the recorder is just taking the call, it's, uh, and it's interchangeable. So if you had 10 or 20 recorders at this site and then another at the other data center, if your recorder gets taken out of service for maintenance reasons or a server fails, the next call just switches over seamlessly. Oh, wow. That's great. Great, great redundancy. Well, thanks so much for your time. This was great. Thank you.